What's going on everybody? This is Chip Walton. I am the AV nerd and the digital content producer for Northern Brewer Homebrew Supply. I am here today to share with you the story of a very unique homebrew, dare I say controversial homebrew, one of the more controversial homebrew recipes we've come up with in recent years, I think. Uh, and partly it's because this beer was never meant to be fermented, it was, let alone kegged and enjoyed. And what it became was quite a lovely, enjoyable, crushable, crispy beer. It's an amazing journey that you're about to witness. And it proves three things. One, if you can dream it, you can brew it. Two, the fermentation power of Omega Yeast's Lutra Kvaik strain. And third, how much fun it can be to ferment with a brat or a dozen brats. That's right, I said brats, y'all. This here is the origin story of the North Star Brat Pills. Here's a quick rundown of what's coming up in this video. I'm gonna run through the brew day and the fermentation. Then I'm gonna show y'all some really funny tasting notes where we did a blind tasting with this beer uh, among my marketing team cohorts at Northern Brewer. And then we're gonna hear from a pro brewer who was inspired by our recipe to uh, kind of bump it up a little bit and do a larger scale brat beer at his nano brewery. First, let's talk about brewing this joke beer that was never really meant to be a real beer. If you're a fan or follower of Northern Brewer social media, you probably remember that this Brat Pills was our 2021 April Fool's Day joke. We built this beer concept around a couple of fun ideas. First off, these days brewers are throwing everything into a beer. Cake, cookies, fruit, mustard. Why not grilled brats? Seems only logical. Second, being a group of good upper Midwesterners, we often boil our brats in beer before grilling them. So what if we flip that script, grill the brats first, then mash them in our beer? So that was the joke. And at first we never really intended to ferment this beer. This was supposed to just be a mash session for a goofy, probably gross photo shoot. But anybody who knows me knows I can't bear to see wart wasted. Thus was born the North Star Brat Pills. I'll link to the full blog post with recipe in the video description. Basically, we did this B-I-A-B style. That's brats in a bag. First, we fired up the trusty old Weber and char grilled a dozen or so brats while bringing the mash water up to temperature in our mega pot kettle. We made sure the brats split open and all those nice juices were flowing. Then we added the brats hot off the grill. They literally sizzled when they were going into the water. We doughed in 12 pounds of raw North Star Pills malt. Char immediately started to chip off the brats and the color of the water, it got a little greenish brown and it added just a bit of smokiness to the aroma of the mash. And it was weird. You've never seen anything quite like this. The brats mixed with the grain just looked absolutely ridiculous from any mash you've ever seen. After mashing for about 45 minutes, we used a pulley to pull the bag out to drain. Again, just an absurd visual of the brats pushed up against the side of the brew bag. Of course, we had to give it a good squeeze to make sure we got all that sweet work and sausagey juice out of the bag. We also were not going to shy away from eating the mashed brats. They were unexpectedly good, plump with sweet malty juice. The next day I even chopped some up for a split pea soup, but that's a whole other story. And that was supposed to be the end of it. Photos taken, joke wort produced, time to dump the wort, right? Wrong. At this point, I was invested. After my coworkers left, I grabbed one ounce of Hallertau hops for bittering and I boiled the beer for an hour. I'd heard really good things about Omega Yeast Lutra Kvike strain and its ability to ferment out a crisp, clean pseudo lager, so I decided this was a chance to give it a whirl. I whipped up a quick, very happy yeast starter and pitched it into the wort once I got it cooled down to the lower 80s. I left the three gallon carboy to ferment that night in my dining room, OG 1056. The next morning, I came downstairs to find a messy surprise. The sticky ring of wort around the fermenter was evidence that the airlock had clearly had a foamy blow off explosion. 
And as you can see from the video I shot that next morning, it was an extremely aggressive fermentation. Churning, chugging, and this was at the lower end of Lutra's recommended temperature range. I can't even imagine what pushing it to the max would do, although I'm sure I'll find out one day. Just two days later, the gravity was down to 1016, and eventually it got down to 1011 for an ABV of about 6%. Although I was expecting some weird stuff to appear on the wort due to the brats and the mash, the beer never really had any weird greasy sheen or shiny spots, funky mold, fat deposit buildup, nothing like that. It fermented pretty much as any regular beer would have. I'm gonna kill this bird! Stop! Hey! Stop! And this is what we ended up with, just shy of three gallons of North Star Brat Pills, or Pseudo Pills, which at this point is pretty much gone. It was always fairly clear almost from the very beginning, but you can see that after two months in a keg, it has gotten brilliantly clear. It's also got this lovely kind of dark yellow golden hue to it. My quick tasting notes, it is wonderfully pills-like. There is like the slightest bit of umami, meatiness, almost like a seared mushroom kind of earthiness to it, but that's way low in the mix. By and far, it is just getting run by the sweet malt aroma of that rich North Star Pills malt. Just a titch of sulfur, a little bit of honey malt, maybe like saltine cracker, light toast as well. The flavor, again, very pillsy. Like, not surprising since it's just North Star Pills and a Hallertau hop very crisp uh, nothing about the brats really seems to jump out there is this kind of like aftertaste to me that again is like almost umami kind of mushroomy but like not unbearably like i could crush this for a really long time uh, i feel like it's a great beer and was definitely worth doing if nothing else for the fact that i now know that omega's lutra is pretty much like a super shredder of a fermenter, tears through the wort, leaves it really clean. For every other Kvike I've ever used, um, this would have turned out kind of peachy or uh, cherry, either like red fruit or stone fruit. This is like, boom, like not much to it other than what else went into it. The Pils malt, the hops, maybe some of the brats. So what's the good of having a beer like this if you can't share it? Share it, I did. I invited over my marketing teammates from Northern Brewer, Abby, Emily, Nick, and Troy. I sat them down and I kind of pitted in a blind tasting the Brat Pills versus one of our favorite local brews, Summit Keller Pills. And if I say so myself, some pretty good times ensued. And this one is definitely A, and this one I know is B. Wait. No, maybe it's the other way around. I mean, actually, it's not what I expected. I expected they look identical. Yeah, they look almost identical. I expect that. I'm assuming that is the brat beer because just lack of head retention. Although because of the oil. Yeah, because like the, the oil on the brat and whatnot. Yeah. I think the cloudy one is the brat beer because of all the fatty things. Yours has like cloudiness and clarity going on. Yeah. Mine has like a little more flat and pretty frothy. That was not poured from a can. Unless Trip's really bad at pouring shit. That's possible. I'm probably not supposed to curse, am I? This one smells sweeter. It's that, yeah, it's tell that, me about the aromas. It's that fatty meat smell. <laughs> it's that meat smell. <laughs> Hold on. That sweet, sweet meat. <laughs> As a vegetarian, how do you feel about drinking meat <laughs> beer in a few minutes? I, I don't even eat, like, soup that has meat broth in it, so this is a big step for me. This is like, yeah, that's a huge step. Yeah. Taking one, taking one for the team. Cheers. Cheers. The one on the left to me, which is the camera's right, has not as much aroma, so there is, and I know the recipe only has an ounce of Hallertau, but there's like, I get nothing on the nose. Whereas this, this uh, comparison beer has a, a much better aroma. It has a, like I think the ladies said, it has a beer flavor. It's beery. That's technical. Beery. I feel like this one smells like hot dogs. 
No. Like just a tiny bit, like kind of like a like a sulfite-y kind of like meaty force meat kind of thing going. You know, it's like a, like a bologna kind of thing, right? So you would say this is the brat beer? I mean, now I don't know because I thought that was the brat <laughs> beer because the, there was no head retention. But now I feel like that one smells more like what I would assume would be the brat beer. It yeah. doesn't taste like meat. So there's that. Let's see. It's to compare now. Yeah. I feel like that's the meat beer. <laughs> <laughs> this tastes more n normal. This one? This one. Well, no, the I one that I don't think is the meat. Okay. The one that you think the meat beer, is there anything like broady specifically about it? I feel no broadiness. Except no. this, the, like the one I think is the meat beer makes me like want to brush my teeth. Mm. There's nothing, <laughs> there's disgusting? nothing like, there's nothing like <laughs> meaty or like fatty or there's no like oily, like there's nothing. It feels a little chewy, mildly chewy. Okay, I am opposite of you. I am definitely thinking this guy is the brat beer. Mostly because I don't get as much. It's like a little bit kind of fruity, kind of like some pear things going on there a little bit though. Like it's super like neutral and kind of pilsner e. Yeah, what were you expecting this might taste like when you saw the process? Grilling. <laughs> Maybe smokier. Yeah. Because we grilled them. Yeah. Some sort yeah, of. Yeah, some smoky char thing. Either taste or aroma. Yeah. Like something there that was like, this is grilled. But there is no grilled. It just tastes like beer. Yeah. Which is what they, we want. <laughs> you get in trouble for that these days if you make a beer flavored oh. beer. It's too boring. <laughs> they're both clean yeah, and they're crisp. Both clean, crisp. Perfect for the style. I just think that one has a slight bologna like note <laughs> to like the nose. A hundred percent sure that is Keller Pills. So I am going opposite. That is Keller Pills. On your right. This is Keller Pills? Yeah. Fuck, it sounds like bologna, dude. I'm sure Summit will love that. <laughs> I'm sorry, I love Summit. Summit beer is great, but like, like a tiny bit of like weird bologna, and it's probably because I'm looking for hot dog. Do I have to drink any more of it? Because I really am good. <laughs> <laughs> no, so which one do you think is which? I think Lefty. Yeah. The I hope I'm wrong. Like, That'd be great. So if the I'm one wrong. on your left is the Brat beer, and the one on your right is Summit Keller Pills. Wow, the only one got it wrong. Oh. Nick, you got just... it wrong? I'm the only one who got it wrong. <laughs> uh, this is the first beer I think I've ever had then with Lutra. And. Yeah. For what I know of the fermentation, it was ultra fast and strong. And I mean, like, this thing tastes clean. Like, it doesn't taste like it got hot or anything like that. Like, it tastes very clean, very crisp. I mean, I would buy that that was a lager. I absolutely would, for sure. It's 100% a legit beer. You yeah. could, this could be stand up against any beer. Do you think you'd enjoy a hot dog beer more? No. Maybe. <laughs> Unclear. <laughs> I feel like I like the water in the hot dog beer would be like saltier and grosser, maybe. What? The water. The water. <laughs> Does that give away where I'm from? <laughs> the water? <laughs> what other meats that aren't cylindrical should we consider putting in beer? <laughs> um, seitan, <laughs> tofu. Um, yeah, probably some vital wheat gluten based <laughs> thing would be great next time so that you guys can enjoy, enjoy the... that. You had some ideas to make the brat beer more broady, potentially. Well, I was hoping for like a goza saltiness in the brat that would show up and I don't get any of that like sour funk. I also think it would be great if we're going to do a brat beer, you'd have a smoked malt in the, gr in the grist. So you could get like that hint of smokiness that you get on the grill, which I thought would come out of the cooked brats. That would have been great, just a high, tiny little smoke, even an aftertaste, like a residual, just a little bit, small percent. I could almost see throwing like something bready in there too, to hmm. like kind of give you like a the bun, like the, yeah. Biscuit toasty. Yeah, exactly, a yeah. biscuit toasty kind of thing, like, like Maris Otter or something yeah. like that is like 5% or something along those lines can be kind of interesting. And then variations next year exactly. on the brat beer. Brought, brought beer. A little bit of smoke malt, a little bit of biscuit. Abby is the social media like overseer. What was, what were people's response? Did people take so this many... as a joke or did people think like, oh, 
But so many we're... people were angry <laughs> that we did this. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but it was April Fool's. People seemed angry, and then when we brought it up a second time, they were like, stop. <laughs> this is, no one wants this. So I'm glad that we're gonna bring it up another time. <laughs> Just... <laughs> These are crazy. That's actually really surprising that it's a normal beer. It's got meat. It's got meat in it. I mean, there's nothing about brats here. It's actually kind of disappointing. I guess we got to up the, what did we call it? The BPG, brats per gallon. I feel like that's got to go up at least another. Smoked malt. Smoked a little malt, marisotter. Little, yep. And then. Double the brats. Double the brats. Yep. What are we doing next year? Not this. I don't ever want to take photos of brats in mm. a bag again. <laughs> <laughs> if at all possible. You should <laughs> do that thing where in like, uh, like that video editing thing where like, people's comments, like, just the cropped shot of people's comments, like, show up on screen as we're talking about the social comments. I'll find them for you, and then you can, like, Wait, have man. them come up. Zero stars. Zero, Zero stars. stars. Would not recommend. Would not recommend. Do not do again. And just to prove even a step further that this ain't no joke, we have a pro brewer who made the brat beer inspired by the Northern Brewer blog. Cheers. Cheers. This is James Kennison Cheers. of Paw Print Brewing down in Chatfield, Minnesota. Closest big city? Rochester. Ah, uh, Southeast Minnesota. Yes. So what do we have here? What is this called? Uh, it's the liquid MRE because uh, it's definitely a meal in a can. So you followed our lead. You brewed a beer, had a bunch of brats in it. Tell me a little bit about the slight tweaks other than the scale. What scale was it? So we brew on a one barrel system, on a spike nano system, which is one barrel. And we grilled up 60 brats. <laughs> we made sure the brats were fully cooked before we threw them into mash. Basically our grain bill is basically 65 pounds of uh, Pilsner malt, about 11 pounds of smoked malt, and, um, and then the 60 brats. <laughs> mash 152. Yep, mash 152 for an hour. Uh, and then uh, during the fermentation process, you know, we used uh, old 05 yeast, more of an uh, ale yeast. We just wanted this to be a quick turnaround kind of beer, so yeah. we, we stayed away from the lager side of things. We went more towards the ale side mm -hmm. just to see how yep. how it would even turn out. Because, like, we, we, we didn't even know. I mean, this was <laughs> the backstory was is we were trying to do something fun too for a, a photo shoot that we had down at our place. and. And uh, so that's why we were kind of just throwing something together. And when we saw that Northern Brewer blog about the brat beer, we were like, well, that'll be a fun day. So. That's very upper Midwestern. Yes. Of all. No, it's legit. It so, tastes like a golden ale. We were kind of talking about yeah. the, it would be the grist and the, the process of maybe like a golden ale, maybe a pale, but not that hoppy. It's Herzberger. It's not like yep. some citra. But I definitely get the big waft of smoke, yep. which in our tasting, we're like, you know what? If we were to do this again, we would hit it with that smoke to force the, the point home that maybe the brat didn't do that. Yeah, so like when we were throwing the brats in, our, our big idea for the brats is like, I didn't think the brats were gonna do too much to the beer. Um, after we grilled them, I was thinking more like getting that charred kind of flavor. I, was, mm -hmm. I thought that was gonna come through, but then the more I thought about it, I was like, no, you know, I gotta add some smoke malt to this because I don't, I just don't think the, the brats just sitting on the mash. Yeah for an hour is really gonna do anything so but yeah but I think it did I, I me personally I get a little bit of a kind of like that brat flavor ish but it, I don't know if that's being tainted by the the smoke malt smoke malt for sure so I keep looking for the spices from yep. within the brat and I don't really yep. get I don't know what those are paprika maybe or like garlic who knows what's in yeah. the yeah, we, brats <laughs> we just use standard brats I mean we didn't use any kind of like yeah like hot Spicy brats, or cheddar like cheese, that. and no, wild yeah. rice with mushrooms. No, we just went with the standard brats. We didn't want to do any of the cheese stuff to get that. <laughs> but, um, but I could see where maybe uh, it, you know just changing up the hop profile a little bit too. Maybe you know like some triple pearl with some some pepper kind of flavoring. Mm. Ooh, yeah. From the home brew to the pro brew. Yep. Yeah. Oh, put, you finished your put your brats right? in your beer. That's the new B-I-A-B, brats in a beer. Brats in a beer, B-I-B. <laughs> I like it. Back here on the at least 100 degree porch during a heat wave in Minnesota, I want to thank everybody who played along with the brat pills, whether you are a hater, whether you are a lover, 
whether you are a pro brewer or a home brewer that embraced the concept, uh, this is not an absurd, I mean, it is an absurd concept. It's not an unheard of concept. I mean, you got Denny Kahn and Drew Beecham making like pork chop beers, and there was another meat beer in their book, Experimental Brewing. So this is just like, it's something fun to do. I could see totally doing it though, if I was ever having, you know, like a, a planned grill out or cook out, and I just wanted to be able to present something that I could tell people had brats in it at this cookout as you're drinking it. The one thing I didn't get a chance to do because it was only three gallons and people enjoyed it and it went really fast. I never actually boiled brats in my brat beer. That would have just like been So I want to give huge thanks to my marketing team cohorts at Northern Brewer as well as everybody at Northern Brewer who did not say, please don't do this. I want to give love to those who gave us love. I want to give love to those who gave us hate because that fuels us in a different creative way. Um, I want to thank James for coming up from Paw Print Brewing. And as we like to say at Northern Brewer, man, brew, share, enjoy. Brew it up, share it with someone. Hopefully it's enjoyable. In this case, it was. Next time somebody's brewing a joke and they think they're gonna dump it down the drain, you tell them, I brought a sanitized bucket in the car. Let me. Let me take that home and figure out what we can do with it. No word left behind. <laughs>